Welcome to Devotionables, Brief Devotions for Busy People. I'm Peter Holmes. I'm a deacon here at Ninth and O, and I also work with our college ministry here. Maybe you've been in a situation like I've been in. No matter what I do, it feels like everything is against me. That nothing goes the way that I think it should. Every time I turn around, the wicked prosper, and I, a follower of Christ, fail. More than likely, you've been there. And if you let your mind wander a bit too much, you may begin to wonder, where is God? Has He left me? Today, as we look at 1 Kings 8 and 9, King Solomon is answering these questions for us through his prayer. In 1 Kings 8 and 9, the temple has been built. The ark has been placed in the temple. <clears throat> what David wanted to do, but was commanded by God that he couldn't do, King Solomon does. The temple is filled with the presence of the Lord, and it is in this moment that King Solomon prays this beautiful prayer to God. In this prayer, Solomon shows us the character of God by going through seven petitions to God. Now, each petition brings up an event that could happen to the Israelites. And in fact, through the history of Scripture, we see that it does happen to the Israelites. Solomon is mentioning events that would make anyone's knees buckle. The first event that Solomon mentions in, in his prayer is a man sinning against his neighbor. And there not being enough evidence to cast judgment on the man. Solomon uses this petition to show how God is the ultimate judge and authority. And one day, he will make all things right and just, <clears throat> and, right and just, even though now it may not feel like it. The next three petitions all involve being defeated by an enemy, exile from land and perils like pestilence, famine, and siege. In each one of these, Solomon is asking that God will forgive his people and their sin. This reminds us that God is a God who forgives us of our sin. The fifth petition turns to the foreigner who enters the land. Solomon calls for God to save the foreigner so that all the earth will know and fear God. Solomon knows that God is great and his renown should be known throughout the whole earth. The next petition is again about going into battle, but this time, instead of defeat because of sin, it speaks on victory through God. Solomon knows that God is victorious and that his justice will be brought to earth. The final petition goes back to the Israelites being taken captive and being rescued by God and taken out of exile. These petitions show us God's character but there's an overwhelming theme that covers this prayer of Solomon. God is in control, and His presence will always be with us. God is in control. He was in control when He told King David that he could not build the temple. He was in control when uh, King Solomon built the temple. He was in control when He told Solomon what to put in the temple and how to construct it. King Solomon knew that God was in control no matter what would happen to the people of Israel. Be it defeat, exile, pestilence, famine, victory, or even the destruction of the temple, God would still be in control. How can this not give us peace? When it seems that nothing at work is going your way, and that the lazy guy in the cubicle next to you gets away with everything, God is in control. When you're having financial difficulties and your lost neighbors are able to have the latest and greatest toys, God is in control. When you have prayed for and shared the gospel with your family and friends and there has been no repentance, God is in control. No matter what, God is in control. But something else happens at the end of, of Solomon's prayer. In chapter 9, verses 1 through 9, God appears to Solomon and promises that what he asks will come. As long as Solomon and the Israelites follow God's laws, God will not leave them. In that promise is also a warning, a warning of what will happen if the people do not follow God's laws. Exile, famine, war, all because they abandon God. 
the temple will be destroyed. But that does not mean that God's presence will leave. He is in control, and He does not leave us. He has not left us. He is here with us. King Solomon knew and felt that God could not be contained in a temple. Today, on this side of the Old Testament, we know that we have the presence of God through the Old Testament. We are no longer, we no longer need the Ark of the Covenant or the temple. He is with us. He will never leave us or forsake us. Like King Solomon knew and understood, God is in control and He is with us. 